Now we're going to delete this part. And now we're going to show you how to create your own names. To do that, we'll go to the text tool that's on the toolbar, which is on the left. It's the A. Click on that. Then just click somewhere on the white area on your screen. Type in the name that you'd like to see. You want to make sure that you always use caps. Once you have your name created, we'll just make sure it's selected. Just go back and use our select tool again from the toolbar. And then we'll go over to properties. Two things you'll be able to do from the properties window is to select your font and adjust your size. First thing we'll do is adjust our size. Once again, we want to make sure that the keep aspect button is always checked. And if we know that our name needs to be 12 inches in our width, we'll just click in that box and change it to 12. Press the tab button and your height should change along with it. Then click on OK. And if, you, if your width and height looks good, then we can go and change our font as well. Let's go back up to the Properties tab, and then click on the Format tab in the Properties window. Here's where we can change our font at. Go to the Font drop-down list and just select the font that you'd like to use. The fonts will vary based on the computer that you have and different fonts that you have installed. For this one, we'll choose the Impact font. And we'll click OK. You can cut from here if you would like, but I'm also going to show you how to create a two-color name. The first thing you want to do is convert your text to a polyline. To do that, we'll make sure that we have the object selected, then go to Object, and Convert to Polyline. You'll notice that you won't notice any change in the file, but the Cut Studio software will. Now that we've made our text into a line, we can create our second color. To do that, we want to click on Object and then Offset. The offset amount that we put into the box that pops up is the amount of the bottom color or outline. An offset of 0.1 will give us a one-tenth of an inch of an outline. So we'll put in 0.1. We also want to make sure that we click on outside to make sure that the offset goes to the outside and not the inside. And you'll see the second color. Now before we cut, we want to make sure that we follow all the same step, steps that I talked about earlier. We want to make sure that your object is mirrored. Object and mirror. And that it's moved to the origin point. Click on Move and make sure it's selected. It'll move down. Now that we're ready to cut, we'll just select the background only. Just make sure that you have the background selected. We'll just separate these so it's easier to get to. Once it's blue, then you know for sure it's selected. And go up to object, or I'm sorry, to file and cutting. And instead of selecting all, which we would normally choose, we're just going to click selection. That will make sure that just that background that we have selected, and you can see here that it's just the uh, with the boxes around the outside. That's all that we'll be cutting. Once we have the selection button checked, we'll just click on OK. And then it'll just send the background. You just follow the same steps for the foreground. Make sure just the foreground selected. Go up to File, Cutting. Once again, make sure that we just have Selection and OK to send to the cutter. That'll wrap up the software portion of our video training. I covered a good bit of material today, but there's still plenty more. Please refer to your manual for all the features available in the Cut Studio or contact your rep at Imprintables Warehouse with any questions.